Now, let's think about what we want. We want a single burst of particles that comes out from the center kind of in a spherical sort of shape. The hard part about this is just like blueprints inside of Unreal is you just kind of have to start familiarizing yourself with the nodes that exist because I'm, I'm just gonna magically pull some of these nodes out. Uh, you you kind of just have to search for them and just know the common ones that you use. But for example, constant spawn rate, we know that we don't want that. If I click on this and I hit spacebar and I start typing, uh, maybe we type spawn or burst and, and now we start to get closer to what we want and we may just have to experiment. I know that I want a single burst and I do not want a constant spawn rate. So I can just click that and delete. You may see some errors on your console window. Honestly, I've been coming across those a lot while I've been working inside of VFX and just, I have not personally had an issue with it. I just kind of ignore it. I don't know if it's just my machine or just this uh, version, but um, you know, you should be able to build out builds and whatnot and it should be fine. Don't be too afraid of that. It's likely just to go away, but um, if any of you have found a uh, way to resolve this, just, you know, comment and let me know because I've just kind of been, uh, you know, ignoring it for now. So anyways, we want a single burst and we could set a count here. So let's say, um, you know, I, I don't even know how many we want. Maybe we want like 100, right? Come back up here. If you select the particle prefab that got created when you, remember we dragged this into the scene, you select that and hit play. You'll see how our, our burst just happened. Now you could do this and you may start to get annoyed by this outlining effect. If you wanna turn that off, you could just come up to gizmos and deselect the selection outline. You may wanna turn it back on later, but um, it, you know while you're working on particle effects, you may wanna deselect that. But you see, we get our burst, which is fine. But imagine that you're a designer and you may want to decide how many particles burst, you know, like maybe this effect you want tons and this effect you just want a couple. To me, that sounds like we may want to make that a variable. So I'm gonna go over here inside of our properties list and I'm going to go to, um, for a number, for a count of a thing, that's gonna be an integer. I'll click on int, first thing I wanna do is rename it and we'll call this particle count. It's always good to set a reasonable default. I put 100 here. So we'll just give a default as 100. Works for me for now. But here's something fun. This actually is probably not actually 100. You know, if we hit play, we could just loosely look at that and like, eh, it doesn't feel like 100 particles, right? The reason is because you see this capacity down here. This is a way for optimization. If I were just to keep hitting the play button, it's just gonna ensure that this particle effect won't just tank your system if, if it just gets triggered too often. In this case, I'm, I'm just gonna change the capacity to 100 and just define that here. Or, you know, maybe even, what if we wanted to trigger this twice? We could even double that and say 200, but we're not actually using this yet, right? Because we put in 100 manually there, but if we, as a designer, we were to come in here and change this to like 50, it still has 100 inside of here. So we actually need to assign, so drag and drop, this into the count. So now we're saying, don't define this here, define this in whatever the, the designer puts in. You know, very similar to uh, exposing an inspector variable inside of a script. So we'll save that. Okay, so we have our burst. Um, I think another thing is that our particles are lasting a pretty long time. So let's let's look down here. In the initialization, we can set a lifetime, you know, the set velocity. I'm just gonna, I'll keep that in here for now. We'll delete, delete it in a second. Uh, let's set the lifetime. And this is saying pick a random number between one and three. And maybe we do want to keep that randomization there. So maybe we uh, create two variables. One so the designer can set the minimum lifetime and then the maximum. So We'll create, um, this is gonna be a float, I believe, since it's a, a time is a decimal. So we'll make, oh, where is this uh, float? We'll call this min lifetime. We'll do another one. Rename max lifetime. Before we do anything, we'll, we'll drag these in. So remember one and three, min and max, get it from there. 
And we'll set the same defaults here. We'll say just minimum is one, maximum is three. Save what we have so far. And so we haven't really done anything, but we have pulled that out into variables. This is something that we're just gonna have to tweak as we go along. But I have some default numbers here. Uh, let's put in 0.5 and one. And you're, you're probably gonna wanna change this once you set some uh, speed values. For now, okay, we could imagine that being something. You know, before too long, we wanna simulate the motion because it seems like that's gonna be something very important to our effect. So right now we're setting the velocity and we're just, we're having it move in a direction. I'm just gonna delete this. Uh, we could tweak those values if we want, but I think there's an easier way. Uh, I'm gonna click this box and hit spacebar and start typing in, you know, we know we want velocity, right? So we're like, okay, uh, add velocity. Um, there's, there's a handy one here, add velocity from direction and speed. You know, there might be a better way to do it, but this is something I've been using. And we want a random direction here too. I'm gonna to click this, but I'm gonna show you something. Um, if you click one of these, sometimes you have the option to you know, add some things over here. I think this node is pretty specialized, but uh, for example, set lifetime, if you did want that to be not random, like you, you wanted this to be, um, you wanna turn the randomization off, you could. And it, it wouldn't be a random, it would just be set this lifetime and it'd be one value rather than two. So just know that some of these nodes you can change here. I think this is a special one that, that maybe you can't, kind of weird. And you know, honestly, maybe some of these nodes, nodes change by the time you're, you're seeing this. But uh, for now, this will allow us to choose a random direction and add a velocity there. So to do this, we want a minimum and maximum speed. So we want speed mode, let's choose random, right? And again, you could do that over here too once you select the node, random. Because we want some of these particles to go at max speed and we want some to be a little slower, just you know, just to add some variation here. So again, I think this is something that we wanna make as a variable because we do want the designer to control this. So we'll add another float, a rename min speed, do another one. max speed and you know for now you could kind of see what's happening there and there are other nodes that can give you this spherical pattern too there's multiple ways to do a lot of things inside of unity so let's just see what's happening right now play okay cool we're already getting some kind of burst which is great May, let's let's make that move faster too, I think. Uh, right, so four, eight, five, ten, something. Actually, that's looking pretty good. Click. All right, that, that'll work for now. Actually, let's keep the minimum just to create more of a sphere. Let's move that to five. Uh, there's so much tweaking when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, 200, okay, cool. So we have the, the general structure of it. Let's, let's go and add more stuff here down an update. I mentioned physics is something that we can mess with. There's a really cool effect you can do here to make the particle slow down really quickly, almost like a, um, so, so like if you were to th throw a sheet of paper, right? Like you were to just throw a sheet of paper really hard, it would just slow down almost immediately because of the drag. Um, we can do some effect like that. So if we click spacebar, uh, linear drag right here, we can give it an amount. And what that's going to do, if I click back here, play. You see how it kind of slows towards the end? Let's, let's make that even more obvious. Change this to, uh, let's just crank it up, five. You see it now, how it kind of like bursts outwards and then pauses towards the end. I think that's too much. Let's do three. Okay, I think that's pretty good. We have, let's see here. So we have our drag here, put three. Uh, you know what, let's make that a variable too. I'm very much a coder, so I like to uh, make lots of variables. Count, so this coefficient, that's gonna be a float since we can do decimals. So let's call that uh, drag. Q. 
you have three here, so we'll just do that. Don't forget to save if you see that asterisk. Now, output. So this is where we choose the rendering. So things like color and whatnot. Face camera plane, this is what allows our particles to look consistent rather than like rotated in weird directions. So we'll keep that. Set size over life. Uh, we, we could do that. I'm just, but I'm gonna delete this. And instead, let's um, click that and press spacebar. Type in set size. So I'm gonna set our size. And we could choose random here, so set size random, but I wanna show you if I do set size, and you can actually reorganize these two if you click and drag. Set size, I can actually turn it on over here instead. So turn on random, like that. You know, either way, you could either choose it and type in set size random, or you could do it over here. I just wanted to let you know that you have more options for node types over here. Honestly, sometimes I feel like there's too many options. Um, I just realized with my new camera setup, you're gonna see me drinking water. That's fine, it, I mean, talking for a long time. You may hear my voice crack. So set size random, we're gonna do minimum size. So we actually wanna expose this as well. Again, ex expose a lot, hide things that need to be hidden, but this is some like a really common parameter on this kind of thing. So we'll do min size and we'll do, you guessed it, max size. So drag these in. size, max size, I think point, point 0.1, we'll go up to point 0.2, fine. Test, select your particle, that way you see the window. Right, already looking pretty good, right? So you see how some are smaller and some are larger. And you can tweak this if you want, right? Like it's it's your own. And honestly, we're setting this up so that a designer can tweak the effects after, and you can reuse this in multiple projects. And I think the last thing I wanna do here is I want to control the color. Now, this you could put the color here, you could, and you could expose that. Um, but I like to use this as an alpha, like a gradient alpha. So I wanna fade out the alpha over time. And instead, what I wanna do is I want to, uh, I'm gonna do set size random. I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna hit space bar, and I'm gonna say set color, right? And it'll put it right after what you have selected. So set color, um, I wanna show you, we can actually make a color, a parameter too. So let's do this. Let's expose to the designer, we'll do plus color. We'll say first, Color, or you know, we could just call this color. I think that's self explanatory. Color, what's our default? I don't know. My example is orange, right? We could do green, it's a common one, blue, red. I think red's a common one. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is when you're using URP and HDRP inside of Unity, you may have to start messing with this intensity value, especially if you want something to glow. Uh, I think in most cases I wanna use this, I want it to be over the top, like a burst of color. So I'm gonna actually turn up the intensity on here once I select a color. So I'm just gonna click this a couple times. I think four is a good starting point. Sometimes I go three or five. I'm going to drag this color in and we'll set the color here. And if you save it, preview it, you're gonna see this happen. and maybe this is a good point to stop and think about, well, why is this happening? And what you may realize if you just follow the trail, this right after is setting the color over life. We actually don't wanna do that because whatever we're doing here, we're setting color, then we're just overriding it, right? Like we're setting a new color over life and we don't wanna do that. So one thing we can do is we can, instead of setting the color, multiply the color over life. So we can actually, multiply this, this color by this, and we can keep the alpha, but because we're multiplying, we're, we're multiplying by white, we're not really affecting the color too much. So hopefully that makes sense. It's like image math, whatever. Uh, click this node, go up to, I believe it's composition, hit multiply. You'll see now, we click the particle burst. See, now we're getting something a little bit closer to what we want, right? Uh, 
this right here, kind of an orange red. And if you wanted this to fade out more slowly, you could drag this up like this if you want. I don't, I don't think, you see how it kind of slowly fades out like that? I actually don't think I want that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that back, right? I want it to fa start fading out right at the very end of its lifetime. And you can actually control this yellow hotspot in the middle with the, uh, the intensity that we messed with before. So I'm gonna take that down a little bit. That's a little bit more orange. Yeah, you know, just kind of use this however you want. But because we made this a parameter, right? Because we made this a parameter, the designer can control it, right? So our designer can come in here and we can say, you know what, I don't even want that color. I want green. Which is really cool, right? Modular, you wanna be able to reuse this in project, especially for prototyping, you still want that feedback flashy effect, but you don't really want, you know, you don't wanna remake your VFX for every single effect. You just wanna be really quick in your prototyping. Um, so if I wanna, you know, go back, I can just uncheck that, go back to the default. And I think that's fine. Make sure that you save it. Now, up to now, we've, we've made our effect and we can play it, right? But we wanna be able to use this in game. And I think we will look at ways to trigger that next. And I wanna isolate out you know, how to make it and then how to trigger it. So how do we trigger this at, at game time? Uh, we will look at how to implement that in the next video.